Hi everybody, it's Miss Angel here to read for you for the Bedtime Storybook Club. It's day 13 of physical distancing. Doesn't have to be social distancing because you can leave a comment. So today's story is called Ostrich and Lark and it's a story from Botswana. <sighs> okay, so there's a prologue that will be at the end, which I hope you'll stay for. And I do know that I'm going to mispronounce names because I could not look them up. Anyway, this story is from the Kung San, but I'm going to try and say it the way that they do. I have no idea if that was right, and I know my timing was just way off, but um, I hope you enjoy the story. I'll see you at the end. Ostrich and the Lark by Marilyn Nelson, illustrated by San Artists of the Kuru Art Project of Botswana. Stay tuned at the end to read a note about the Aikung San. Ostrich and Lark started each morning together at first light day in and day out, and they parted at nightfall. Every day they nibbled an ongoing meal, a few seeds here, a few seeds there, for ostrich the occasional lizard. All day the sun glared out of cloudless blue. Every day all day, over the cicada's drone, a drizzle of buzzings fell, and a downpour of birdsong. Hornbill, bee-eater, hoopoe, diederich, mousebird, wida, canary, from gray light come to last light gone, the fancy-dressed suitors of the veld warbled their rain-showered jazz. But Ostrich was silent. Lark sang the first song of the day, perched tall, slender, and tawny brown on a termite castle or a low branch of a camel thorn tree. But Ostrich was silent. When Lark sang, he flickered his wings and his white throat feathers trembled. All day Lark sang, standing still or flitting, his open wings vermilion spangled. But Ostrich was silent. At dusk, Lark sought his hidden nest on the ground. Ostrich sat down under an acacia tree and tucked his head under one of his black and white wings. Sometimes he dreamed of flyings. Sometimes he dreamed of seeing the sky full of stars. Sometimes he dreamed of the green seasons drinking caught water and drinking and drinking. At first light, Lark called and together they started their day. One evening, as the great red sun sank toward the tree-spiked horizon and the birds swooped to their nests, as the plant either eaters gathered at full alert and the meat eaters woke up to prowl, as the gates of night opened to the dark, Ostrich fluttered his billowy wings. He stretched his graceful neck, closed his eyes, and... Ostrich found his voice, a voice part lion's roar, part foghorn, part old man trumpeting into his handkerchief. Ostrich was booming, which is what ostriches do. The veld fell silent. And Ostrich boomed like thunderheads on the horizon. 
ostrich boomed like the rainstorm that ends the dusty months of thirst. Ostrich boomed like the promise of jubilant green, like the promise of birth. Ostrich boomed Lark right off his perch. Lark flew up to an ostrich high branch and looked at his friends with a big wow in his eyes. Ostrich had found his voice at last, his own beauty, his big, terrific self. So that was the ostrich and the lark. Have you ever felt like the ostrich where, you know, you just felt like everybody else has got something that you just wish that you could do? And it was all about finding the courage within yourself. What did you do that took a lot of courage for you to show yourself and be proud of yourself? This, taping these for you, is kind of my thing. So I hope you're really enjoying them. Also, I hope you guys are enjoying when I do the prologues or epilogues or however you want to put that because sometimes they come in the beginning of the book but you don't get until the end of the video. Um, I enjoy learning about the other cultures and where the stories come from and maybe where people have written them, where they got their ideas. Uh, I especially appreciate in this one where they talk about how Bushman is not an appropriate term, even though I know we've been using it forever. I mean, they even use it in The Gods Must Be Crazy, which incidentally is a film that I love. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's a great movie. Um, but uh, I always appreciate getting a little bit of cultural insight. So I hope I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, subscribe here if you haven't already. Like and comment and follow me on Facebook at Bedtime Story Book Club and click here for more stories from me. Have a nice day. See you tomorrow. A note about the Kunsan. The Kunsan people are one of the many groups left of the people formerly known as the Bushmen of South Africa. They consider most of the names others call them, Bushmen included, insulting. They prefer to be called by their own group names, Ju Hosani, Kong, Naro, Anikwe, among others. They live lightly on the earth, leaving almost no footprint. Their language is one with many click sounds. Many of us have seen and heard and saw the delightful son actor in the movie series, The Gods Must Be Crazy. In reality, the lives of the sun are extremely precarious. The farms and wild animal parks shrink their hunting lands. The sun have been slowly displaced, their old way of life made impossible because of development. They live in what is mostly the Kalahari Desert and are often denied access to the water wells that exist on the land they once inhabited freely. They are hunter-gatherers forced to enter a 21st century economic environment. Now their only means of survival is to learn how to make money. The paintings for this book were created by San artists who are members of the Kuru Art Project of Botswana. Kmoga Simon Gamokwe Kumara Kukama Jean Tsia Kwageko Thame Kashi and Kwahu. I'm attempting to say those names the best I can. There was no way for me to look them up. I tried. The author's proceeds from the sale of this book will be donated to the Kuru Art Project, part of a family of organizations dedicated to empowering the Kunsan with cultural revival and modern survival techniques such as training programs in income generation, leadership, and other skills. More information can be found at the link that I will provide in the description.